Hello, Mike Jigani, and this is Straight Talk. With me today is Elsie Leung. Elsie Leung, now you are the former Deputy Director of the Basic Law Committee. You are also the uh, Secretary for Justice after the handover, right? Yes, uh, the first the time. Secretary for Justice, so I'll address you as Madam Secretary, even Thank though you. you are no longer the Secretary for Justice. So may I address Justice. you as Michael, simply? <laughs> yes, just call me Michael. <laughs> now, um, you obviously you have said uh, that you support the new national security law for Hong Kong, mm. but the details are not known. And a lot of people have come out and said they support it. When some of the details came out on Saturday, the chief executive said she supported it. Uh, the current Secretary for Justice, uh, Theresa Chiang, also said that uh, Theresa Chang also said that she supports it. How can you support something you don't know the details? Yes, actually I'm very disappointed that the bill is not published. But um, instead we get an explanatory explanation from the um, uh, NPCSC um, regarding the contents of the bill and the principles uh, on which it has to be drafted. And according to that, I think um, it um, uh, allied a lot of my fears. So the thing is, uh, you said you're disappointed the details have not come out, but you said that uh, even though some details have come out, so you, you, your original fears are gone, right? But you still don't know the full details. That's true, but uh, I think the explanation um, um, is rather uh, detailed, and um, uh, uh, some of the things which I worry about um, are set out in the um, uh, in the explanation uh, memorandum. So um, I think that for, just for example, um, uh, people are afraid to whether um, the um, mainland law, the legal principles will apply. And now you can see from the explanation that um, actually it follows uh, very much the common law system. And it also assured us that um, the fundamental rights and freedom of Hong Kong people will be protected. Uh, and the principles of the ICCPR and the uh, economic, social, and cultural rights um, the international covenant would, would also be respected. So uh, I think a lot of these kind of things which you, do not see the, you did not see in the decision have now come out. But still, you know, you have a legal background, yes. right? I mean, you have a legal background. As a lawyer, you know, before you support anything, in common law, right, mm. the fine details mm. must be known. Mm. Right, mm. the law must be very clearly written mm. so you know mm. what of offenses you have committed. Yes. Right, it's yes. got to be very, very yes. narrow. Yes, what we've got now are broad, broad principles, mm -hmm. which we got last Saturday. Mm. We don't have the nuts and bolts of the law, mm. so how can anybody support that? Yes, I think um, the most important thing is the principles on which the law will be uh, is drafted. Mm -hmm. And um, th I believe that uh, the um, explanation has given um, sufficient memorandum for me to support the bill as a whole. Uh, firstly, the purpose for which the bill is to be enacted. Secondly, the scope of the bill. Um, and also, um, the, the, the most important thing is about the um, uh, enforcement uh, mechanism that would be in strict accordance with the Hong Kong law. Now, one of the things uh, that a lot of people are worried about mm -hmm. is that, uh, there are several things people are worried about, mm -hmm. is one that there's going to be uh, a national security agency set up in Hong Kong mm -hmm. by the central government. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that a commission will be set up to oversee this law, chaired by the chief executive, but somebody from the mainland of a very senior rank will be there to supervise this. And then the third thing is that the chief executive will have the right to appoint judges to try these cases. Mm. We have an independent judiciary. Mm. When the executive decides which judge should try a case, that takes away our independent judiciary. Can we deal with your questions one by one? Sure. Answer me about the judges first, the chief executive appointing okay. judges. At the moment, judges are appointed by the chief executive. Of course, on the recommendation of the Judicial Officer Recommendations um, mm -hmm. Committee, um, uh, and um, the chief executive can only appoint the candidates submitted 
by the commission. Uh, that, that's committee. the current situation. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and um, she cannot choose uh, a candidate of her own, unlike the President of the United States. Um, um, and um, uh, what ensures judicial independence is not just the, only the appointment, but also the security of tenure of office, which, judici which judges enjoy. That is, once appointed, um, you cannot remove him or her unless um, he cannot um, perform his duties because of physical or mental um, incapacity, uh, or he has committed a serious offence. Now, that serious offence is not just a mistake in law. Uh, it has to be something like corruption or misconduct and something. Sure. So that, and even though there's such allegation, it has to be investigated by a panel of three judges and reported uh, to the uh, chief executive. Now, um, and so the um, judges are able to um, conduct cases uh, I, without any interference. I understand that. Yes. Uh, you know, you, you point that out that currently the chief executive appoints judges based on the recommendations by an independent body, right? Yes. But then under but, the new... But the judges to be appointed by the CE is already in service, not just pick up somebody in the street and appoint sure, you. Sure, I understand that. But then now, uh, the judges are already in service. But as far as I can remember uh, from what uh, came out Saturday, she can appoint current judges or retired judges, yes. right? Yes, now, which she originally appointed. Sure, right. But the thing is, there is, there, there are a lot of judges in, in Hong Kong, right? Yeah. Now, is it right then, even though she had originally appointed these judges to sit on the bench, mm. that when a case comes, she decides which judge should try that case. Now, I'm not so sure about this point because it may be that she'll appoint a panel of judges that was or not said may, on Saturday. Uh, no, uh, if you look at the press release, it said that um, several judges. Mm. You can't have several judges. So it said you are gone. You are gone means a number of judges. So we, we don't know um, exactly whether it is a panel of judges to try those cases or whether um, she will appoint a judge for individual cases. You know the difference. You, you, you say that the American president can appoint judges. Yes, but the American president does not. Appoint uh, uh, does not appoint a judge to try a particular case, right? In this case, that's what's going to happen. No, in I don't think this is exactly what, because we still have to wait and to see the detail of the bill. At the moment, it said that upon several uh, a number of judges, so uh, it may be there's a panel of judges who will um, sit on the, uh, to, to uh, try cases on the list, you know, in the High Court. We have different lists in the original jurisdiction. You have commercial cases, you have MOT cases, uh, you have uh, 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 a number of the jurisdictions, uh, company law and so on. So, I mean, th there's going to be a list of uh, national security cases. Is it that she will appoint several judges, uh, as he said, mm -hmm. uh, or whether she's going to appoint one judge for each case? We don't, we, we don't know that. Know yet. We don't, we know, don't the know that yet. Okay, let me just ask but, but, you. Uh, uh, it doesn't affect the, the judicial independence because um, she can appoint the, the judge, but whatever decision the judge is going to make is not uh, she cannot interfere with. The percent, the perception is that it will interfere with uh, judicial independence. No, she cannot legally. Uh, if, you know, I, I, I don't know, of, of course, uh, as a matter of perception, that you can imagine anything, but um, I think that be, the, as the law stands, uh, anybody who interferes with uh, uh, administration of justice will be guilty of obstruction of justice and also contempt of the court. Now, uh, and also that she cannot remove the judge unless um, uh, he or she is unable to carry out okay. uh, duties or unless she has committed a mistake, which is not just okay. a mistake in law. Just, just so so she, if you cannot remove him uh, or her, then the, uh, how, how could you um, alter? or inference, the outcome I, of the I case. Think, I think a lot of people think that, you know, there are some judges that are sympathetic to one particular cause, depending on previous rulings, last year's rulings on the protests, and some are not, and, uh, and, ah. and, and there, there is a situation that, that there. I must say that is a lot of misunderstanding on this. You see, one of the requirements for a judge uh, is the judicial temperament, and that requires him to be very impartial. 
Um, and uh, you, uh, I, I think in that particular case, um, the, the, there was nothing wrong about the judgment itself. People feel that it was c c correctly um, administered, but um, uh, uh, because of the um, com uh, remarks, uh, which gives the people uh, the perception. Well, that, that there was a case where a judge made some yes, remarks, which, yes. which but that is the the the, the, the chief ju the chief justice or the the chief judge will have to see to it that um, people will not just um, believe that justice is done, but also have to see to see no, that it's done. I've got so so that's why you, you can you cannot make your views known that give people the impression that you are going to deal with cases more sympathetic to the... the um okay, I've got just a few seconds before the break. Uh, are you worried, does it make you uncomfortable that there's going to be an agency called the National Security Agency uh, There is another Hong issue. Kong? I think well, one thing we have to, um, regarding the appointment of judges, uh, one thing we must remember um, is that um, um, uh, the, the appointment does not affect um, the judgment to be made is one thing. And also um, that, um, so sorry, I, 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 I leave this okay. point. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think that um, the, the uh, s national security is something very special. Uh, that's why you have this National Security Council. Uh, National Security Commission or Council, whatever you call it, um, will have very specialized knowledge. The chief executive as chairperson of that commission or council will have more knowledge concerning national security, more knowledge information concerning okay. that than the chief justice, for example, okay. or the chief judge. I've got to take a quick break. Mm -hmm. See you soon. Don't go away. Thanks for staying with us. It's a straight talk with me is Elsie Leung. Elsie Leung, you uh, were the uh, deputy director of the uh, Basic Law Committee, also the uh, former Secretary for Justice. Yes. Now, um, one of the things that a lot of people also worry about is under this new national security law, there will be a commission uh, which will be headed by the chief executive. And, uh, and, and all uh, some of the top ministers, including the police commissioner, will be sitting on this commission. And uh, the central government will be sending somebody very high, I, w I was reading a vice ministerial level person, coming to supervise, advise, whatever word you want to use. But the worry is that this is now creating a power center and she, this person will be supervising the chief executive. Mm. We've essentially, in that way, lost one country, two systems. <laughs> I don't agree. Uh, first of all, the commission comprises main the, the, the chief executive and principal officials, right. all Hong Kong officials, mm -hmm. Hong Kong people running Hong Kong. Uh, and then you talk about the, 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 the person that to be appointed by Central People's Government. According to the, the, the press release, it said that um, he is going to be um, an advisor. Advisor means he gives advice, but it's up to you whether or not to accept the advice. That's not how people understand the communist oh, system. Then they're, when they're I advise wrong. you, you have to listen. Uh, that's not what I understand to be, but that is what is stated here. And um, he, his purpose is to um, give advice um, the, um, the, for the... Um, for Can the, the chief executive person. overrule that advice? Um, it's not overruling the advice, but or it, not it's, taking uh, it. it's up to uh, now the uh, commission or council, uh, national security committee or uh, commission or council is uh, responsible uh, to the uh, central people's government. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the national security uh, ministry is um, responsible to the central people's government. If the opinion between the um, commission and the uh, ministry uh, are different, then both of them will refer the matter to the highest, to the central people's government. And then it's up to the central people's government to decide who, which one is correct. So because in, in fact, the final are, decision yes, is are, with the central and, government? Yes, because they are on equal footing. I mean, that there's not one above the other. And also this um, gentleman or lady is going to um, give advice only. He cannot, um, he cannot make order. There's a difference between giving an order. That, that I, I understand yeah. that, but the peop 
people say that if such a high level person sent by the central government to give advice, that advice must be taken. It doesn't even say that it's going to be a very high position person. I read that it's going to be somebody of vice ministerial rank. No, um, uh, this he states that um, the, um, um, uh, the 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 Hong um, uh, no, they haven't actually said Hong Kong, where, um, what person. But I've read some reports that say it's going to be a very senior official. But this is not what is stated. In the press release, it just says an advisor. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. just say the advice. Okay, now uh, I'll switch topics a little bit. One of the things that did happen was they added the word collusion. Uh, uh, as on, another issue. Yeah. That's right. So, so I'm going to switch to that issue now. Yes. Uh, collusion, uh, foreign foreign uh, uh, interference, colluding with foreign forces. What exactly is colluding? If a person goes to the United States talks to the Secretary of State and says, please help Hong Kong, we're losing our autonomy, we're losing our democracy, please help us uh, get back what we had. Is that collusion? No, first of all, um, going back to what this um, collusion is, uh, it uh, only relates to the um, scope of the bill, which is to um, enact law to prevent, to stop and to punish se uh, secession, subversion. Um, terrorist act, terrorism, um, and um, uh, and and the um, foreign um, uh, individuals or organizations which carry on um, activities endangering national security. So this is the scope of the bill. Uh, so we're just dealing with that. Yeah, but now when my you talk about was, collusion, mm -hmm. then collusion is also within this sphere only. So it's, it it's going to the U.S. To, collusion. Going to the U.S., of course, is not collusion. Asking uh, the Secretary of State to help Hong Kong fight for democracy, is that collusion? No, um, I don't think uh, the democracy is an, uh, is an offense or criminal uh, offense uh, is a crime. Uh, but the point is, if you request the foreign government to take action, which is to injure the interests of Hong Kong or in the interests of the um, People's Republic of China um, or endanger the national security. How do you injure interests of Hong Kong? If you ask the central, uh, if you ask the U.S. government to stop giving special trade status to Hong Kong, is that in injuring the interests of Hong Kong? Well, th that is of course mutual. But the point is, if you ask the U.S. government to impose sanction on Hong Kong, mm -hmm. that certainly impair our um, uh, interests. So that would be collusion. Yes, I would think so. So if you were to ask the U.S. government to say impose sanctions on individuals or Hong Kong or entities, that would be injuring? For the purpose of, um, um, uh, if it imposed the uh, sanction, it's for the purpose of the, um, um, secession, subversion, uh, terrorist um, acts. I mean, it's only those um, act, uh, behavior or activities which are governed by the bill. Okay. Now I'm going to switch topics again. Some people said that Legislative Council candidates uh, must support the national security law. If they don't support the national security law, they should be disqualified. Do you agree with that? If the purpose of opposing the bill is to, well, that the, there are areas that need to be improved, um, to make comments, um, uh, I, I don't support the bill because there are areas which I do not agree. Now, that is so uh, it's not a subversion, secession, or terrorist action. So, in, in other so words, it's, it's outside the view. But if um, it's coupled with other behavior, um, and uh, if, if it comes within the purview of uh, Article 104, um, that is, if the action amounts to um, not upholding uh, the basic law, or not swearing allegiance, or, or not behaving in accordance with allegiance to um, Hong Kong SAR and the PRC, uh, then it would uh, disqualify the candidate. So if, if, it's if not I'm because of this itself, because of the oppo opposition to the bill itself. So if I'm running for LegCo, supposing, mm. right? Uh, if I'm running for LegCo, and then I say, you know, I really don't support any part of, of, of this uh, national security law because I think it, it, uh, it, it kind of uh, dilutes one country to system. And I don't agree that the chief executive should appoint judges to try cases. Therefore, on those grounds, I oppose. And I will tell uh, that the, the person deciding whether I'm eligible, uh, the returning officer, I will tell that person these things. Would those be grounds to disqualify me? I think the um, returning officer would uh, 
uh, consider the situation as a whole and make a, a, his or her decision. But um, I believe that if the purpose is that you are not satisfied with the contents of the bill, uh, I don't think that would disqualify the candidate. But if you oppose the bill, it's because you think um, we should not do anything to protect national security. Then you are not upholding the basic law or the uh, sparing allegiance to the whole But you can bill. say, you, can, you, you know, you, I oppose... You can criticize the bill. You can criticize the bill. Oppose it, and you can oppose run for it because you are not satisfied with it. But you cannot say that well, I, I don't agree that we should protect national security. No, of course people won't say that. I mean, every, every country has a right to protect national security, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. you are right. You are so exactly I, I, right. I don't, I don't so think I mean, if say you don't um, uh, uh, swear, if you do not uh, swear allegiance to um, Hong Kong the RPRC, then then uh, okay, I'm going that would disqualify. I'm going to switch topics again. I'm running out of time. Last year's protests, you saw people throwing petrol bombs, you saw people uh, uh, confronting with the police, you also saw peaceful marches. Uh, there was a mix of everything. Uh, mm. Would those people who took part in violent protests last year, would they fall under this law? You can't have a general question like that, Michael, I'm afraid. Uh, because you see, um, the, you everybody agree that um, the, the um, uh, uh, prote protesters were not just um, uh, social issues, social unrest. Uh, you can see that they, uh, some of them did it with the purpose of secession, subversion, uh, and those are terrorist acts. Um, and also you can see, if you compare what happened in Hong Kong and what happened in the States, you can see that um, the houses was much organized and also that you have got um, foreigners directing them. What to do? But there's no proof of that. Therefore, oh, yes. I mean, I, I mean, you talk about perception. That is the perception given to a lot of people. Uh, so, in other, in in any event, at that time, the the, the national security law has not come into effect. Okay. So, but the, if this kind of thing happened afterwards, and if there is evidence, should it be retroactive? The law. No, I don't think the law would be retroactive. Okay. But, but of course, you see, like in 1997, we had this immigration um, mm -hmm. uh, control or, uh, ordinance amended to prevent people coming to Hong Kong illegally. We had it retrospective sure. because we are afraid a large number of people would, would rush to Hong okay. Kong. I've got one minute left. Now, <laughs> I'll just ask you this. Uh, the the, dep uh, the, the uh, Mainland Affairs Office, uh, Jiang Hume, he said that... Uh, this is a political problem. Before they said it was housing and so on and so on. Now he said some weeks ago, this is a political problem. Is this law going to solve the political problem in Hong Kong of young people coming out to protest? The law cannot stop people from doing... Uh, 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 from Can it solve out. the issue? It cannot solve the issue, but um, it is one, uh, it is necessary to have a law to deter people, to prevent people, to stop people, uh, and to punish people for committing acts which would um, endanger national security, Michael. All right, but there's still a pro political problem that needs to be solved. But if there's no stability in the society, you cannot solve any other problem. All right, I've got to end it right there. Thank you very much. See you next time. Good evening.